morning and thank you for joining us today for our online services at the Foundry. Uh, today I wanted to share with you a thought from Galatians 2.20 where Paul teaches, I am crucified with Christ. Uh, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And this life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And this idea that it can be Christ who shines through us because of his actions um, is just an awesome idea that we can go and be activated to be his hands and feet and his servants here on the world. And as Jesus taught, uh, we're supposed to be the light of the world um, in Matthew 5. So would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we ask that you come into our lives, hearts, minds, help us to love our neighbors and love you, to be your hands and feet, to be the light of the world, to let people see your goodness shine through us. Uh, we ask that you can activate us and move us along into these good plans and good works that you have laid out for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you join me as we sing together? Oh, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm.
is gone and all that remains is a fire so bright the whole world can see there's something different so could you be different and I just want to be different so could you be different in me I just want to be different I want to be different Lord, we ask that you be with us today. Be with us during our time of worship. Be with Emmanuel and Alex as they are expecting their child. Lord, we ask that you can be with us all. Give us the strength and the hope that we need to be the light of the world that you want us to be. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you keep your hand over each and every one of us. Please bless us, Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm so happy I get to share with you this morning. Um, due to Emmanuel's haircut situation, I decided to give him a break from the camera. And this is why I'm tuned with you today, the message. <laughs> so all joking aside, um, I'm so happy that um, I get to share with you today. And I keep praying that everybody is healthy, everybody is well, and, and that we continue being the church that God has called us to, to be. Um, some of you may know today is a very special day um, in church history. Today we celebrate um, the day of Pentecost. Um, many of you know that I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and many times the meaning of this word of this word um, was incorrectly defined, based or maybe limited to the emotions or experiences that we might have had with the Holy Spirit. But what I also learned from my Pentecostal church was that the Holy Spirit gives us power to the extent that we are able to change the world and the people around us. In my personal experience, that power from the Holy Spirit took me places that I never thought I was going to be able to go. Um, it gave me also an understanding of what is God's love when I received demonstrations of love from people I didn't even know in, in those places I visited. And even when, when we got here to Escondido, um, we were so warmly welcome. And, and those demonstrations of love, you know, I still cherish them to this day. And, and also that power from the Holy Spirit activated in me the gifts that have taken me to fulfill the purpose that God um, has for me in this specific time and in this specific place with this specific community. So today I want to talk about how this day of Pentecost was a day of activation. When the Holy Spirit came to the people that were in the higher room, the Holy Spirit activated gifts in the man and woman that were waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. It was an extraordinary experience that unleashed, unleashed and gave power to this man and woman to then become the church. So I want to read the first four verses of this um, second chapter of the book of, of Acts. And it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Wow! 
these these four verses are filled with miraculous images that represent the Holy Spirit. The roaring sound, the mighty windstorm, the flames that settle um, on each person, the ability to speak different languages. Here we have a clear image of the supernatural of God, the supernatural power of God. But not only that, we have an image of how God shared that supernatural power with the people that were there uh, present. So both men and women receive this power equally. And we can see the fulfillment of God's word to the prophet Joel. And, and we read in Joel. Um, 228 when it says then after all those things i will pour out my spirit upon all people and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and how they prophesy the holy spirit gave power to all the people that were there equally because every woman and every man there present were going to be a part of a specific purpose that God had for them. And that purpose was to proclaim the wonderful things God had done. And, and this is what we read in, in the next verses of Acts 2, verses 7 to 11, what it says. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Persians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the, the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. And the reason it mentions all these places is because Jews that were in exile were born in other places and spoke other languages, gathered together in, in, and traveled all the way to Jerusalem to celebrate this festival of Pentecost, where they remember uh, the day that God gave the law to Moses. So God is a specific event to activate the gifts of these people with the purpose of spreading the message of the kingdom of God in a way that was affected and that everybody that was there was able to understand. And for me, it is interesting in verse, uh, in verse 4 when it says, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability or this capacity, it was the Holy Spirit who activated them and gave them the capacity or the ability to do all these things. So literally, God lit in them the flame that ignited like an uncontainable wildfire, the mobility and then the existence of the church. And this activation wasn't limited to the proclamation of the gospel in a supernatural way, but this miraculous power infiltrated every aspect of the life of the people that were there. So the way that they lived, the way that they related to other people changed drastically in order to reflect the image of the kingdom of God here on earth. And we can see the consequence of this activation um, of the church through the Holy Spirit. And this is what it says in the last verses of chapter 2 of Acts in verses 42 to 47. It says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. 
all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Amen. So here I want to bring the main point of this message. This is what I want you to take with you today. I'm going to read it. It says, Just as the gifts of the church were activated through the empowering of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, the gifts of the church today continue to be active to fulfill her purpose in the kingdom of God. And I want to read this one more time. It says, Just as the gifts of the church were activated through the empowering of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, the gifts of the church today continue to be active to fulfill her purpose in the kingdom of God. So we've heard or seen in the media petitions and orders to um, reopen churches. And, and sometimes it sounds as, as if the church has been closed for the past two and a half months. And, and here I want to make a pause because I don't want to create any uh, misunderstandings of what I'm saying. The verses that we, that we read before talk about how all these people were gathered together in the same place and they did everything together. So I, I recognize the, the importance to gather. Um, in fact, I long for that day when we can see each other face to face. Um, that day when we can worship together, we can sing and pray and eat and, and do all those things that we used to do together. And, and I deeply believe that God designed the church that day, um, that way, because he created in every human being the desire to share life with other people, the, the desire to belong to a community. And, and I am also aware of the negative effects that this pandemic has caused in the minds and spirits of people because we can't see or be with the people that we love and we can't be with the people that share our same faith. I have experienced these effects myself and I know of many people that will find it hard to go back to the discipline of gathering and even to get back those spiritual disciplines that for one reason or another were abandoned during this season and, and were supported by the gathering of the community. But during this exceptional time in our history, I have also seen the church activated in ways that are unique and that wouldn't have happened if not because of this situation. In fact, I will dare to say that this situation has moved us to be more intentional in reflecting our mission and our values to our community. In general, we have seen how the church at large have has had a greater impact by using digital platforms like we're doing right now to reach a greater number of people. And this has taken God's message to thousands, if not millions of people, even people that have never set foot um, on a church. Also, our church has continued to raise you know, our voice in the midst of injustice and social sin that we continue to face or we have seen just recently this past week with the case of the murder of George Floyd by the police. As a free Methodist church, we condemn these actions. We weep as a community and we pray for this family that is suffering unfairly. And, 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 and now I also want to tell you some stories about how our church, our community has been activated during this exceptional time in history. And I sincerely believe that we have been able to reflect that model of the primitive church that we read in verses 42 to 47. So, so here are some stories that, that had happened in the past two and a half months. Our food pantry, as you all know, has been able to remain open from the beginning during these critical months, providing food to families that are in great need. The volunteers that work so tire tirelessly have 
sacrifice and, and even risk their health and, and given their time to continue serving in this way. And we have seen how God has protected them. We have seen how God has provided and continue providing the food that the pantry has need to continue distributing this food to the families that are in need and that, you know, continue increasing. We have seen an increase in people that have come because of this situation and, and the great need of food. And also through this demonstration of love and service, the volunteers that don't attend our church or any church have become intrigued about why is it that we do and take the risk that we take. So, you know, the volunteers from our church have been able to, you know, tell them we do this because we love God, we love our neighbor, we love our community, and, and we have been able to pray with them and share about God's love, so we have been able to continue testifying about, you know, the gospel and, and the message that we want to be flagged to, to our community. Another story that, that we can share is that during this time, people have been moved to share their money with others. We have, we have been able to see the principle that we just read in verse 45 where it says, and they share the money with those in need. Um, when people from our church have made special offerings, um, to give to those families that ha have lost wages through losing hours at work or they, they haven't been able to work at all because of, of the pandemic. Um, so we have seen that support, that financial and, and, and actual, um, support to these families. And, and through this, we have seen God's provision. They have been able to see how God has provided, um, to their need and to their prayers. In my personal history, the favorite, um, story that has happened during this time is that People that have, have never discipled anybody or maybe that they haven't discipled somebody in a long time, their gifts have been activated to practice discipleship. They have been able to enter into a one-on-one -on -one discipleship relationship um, or, or, or have been able to disciple more than one person. And even people that don't come to a church or people that are not Christian. So... This is how we've been able to um, maintain that unity of the body of Christ. And we have been able to reflect those values that we hold dear of prayer, of, of staying strong in scripture, and of um, teaching other people how to follow Jesus. Uh, for example, we have mothers discipling their families. We have people disciple, uh, discipling their neighbors. And even, you know, within our congregation, we have new uh, discipling relationships that didn't exist before this situation. Um, so they have been created specifically because of this moment in time. And, and, I have heard the testimonies of how people have strengthened their spiritual disciplines during this time. I have heard the testimony of how we have prayed for God to provide opportunities so that people can engage in spiritual conversations with people that don't have a relationship with Jesus. And God have, has provided this, these opportunities and the courage to seize these opportunities. So, so people have been emboldened by the power of the Holy Spirit to, to share the love to share the message of God during this time. And this is, these are just examples of how our church has been activated because of the situation that we are living. So God has been moving in ways that are unique and special during this time. And in all honesty, I really don't know if we would have been this intentional in doing all these things if not for these exceptional circumstances that we are living right now. So with this message and these stories, I just want to encourage you. I want to let you know that in these moments more than ever, the church has remained open, the church is still alive, and the church has been activated in unique and exceptional ways to continue fulfilling her purpose on earth. So if any of you that are listening to me right now, um, 
don't feel that are part of what God is doing in the church and through the church, I encourage you to give us a call or send us a message if you are close by our community. We will do everything in our power to connect you with what we're doing during this time, those discipling relationship, discipleship relationships and, and the sharing of our goods and, and, and everything that we're doing. We want you to be part of and become that church that is activated. As I said before, I long for the day. I long for the day that we can celebrate our services together again. And I, I long that that day will come soon. I want to see all of your faces, hear your stories, and more than anything, continue sharing our faith with one another. And as we wait for that day, I encourage you to continue being the church that has been activated to share God's love in this specific time and in this specific moment, in this specific place that we are in. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this day that we are celebrating today, the day of Pentecost, reminds, reminds us of the Holy Spirit presence in us. It is a reminder that you are with us every day, in every moment, and we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you because you have activated in us the gifts and the abilities to continue being the church that you have called us to be. And I pray, Lord, that you will continue doing so, that you will continue empowering us to be that church, that you will give us the strength and the peace and the joy, Lord, to be that church during these specific moments. I know that it's hard to live during this time. It has been very difficult for a lot of us. But I know that the presence of your Holy Spirit will get us through this. And we will continue to be in the church that you have called us to be. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, and I hope to see you in, in some way or another next week. We love you. Bye.